Have you ever owned a piece of gear and then for whatever reason, it leaves your possession? Maybe you needed cash and you had to sell it or you were borrowing it and had to give it back. A little bit of time passes and you realize you miss it badly. Call it seller's remorse. Now, due to the nature of this channel, I get this a lot. And instead of gas, gear acquisition syndrome, I get grass, gear reacquisition syndrome. And so in this video, I thought it'd be fun to go through a few of the products over the years that have given me a bad case of grass. Now, as well as being a video guy, I'm also a, an audio recording guy and I'm also a musician. So the products I'm mentioning, that it's gonna be a big old mix of all of those things. Before I go into my list, I also just wanted to invite you to have a think about which products have really given you grass and please share them. I cannot wait to read what yours are in the comments section. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers. And um, honestly, if you could just take a second to hit that subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me and um, it helps the channel massively. I thank you so much in advance. These videos are not sponsored, but they are made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel to buy gear and then I review the gear and give it away to my backers, if that's of interest. So first up, we have such a sweet, camera lens. It's a lens that I couldn't justify keeping once I'd reviewed it. And that's the Tamron 35-150 to f2-2.8. to It's a spectacular lens with a kind of unbelievable combo of a great zoom range and a wide maximum aperture. When I reviewed it, I said this. This is one of the best lenses I've ever used. And I would say if you are a Sony user and you have to buy only one lens. And the footage I got from it is kind of unbelievable. Check this out. Honestly, I won't be surprised to hear people say in the comments that they've pared down their prime lenses because of this lens. I'm aware that Samyang makes a weirdly similar lens, which I will get to review at some point. And quite honestly, it's that thought that's the reason that I don't own the Tamron today. Next, we have something completely different from the very beginning of this channel where I was doing almost exclusively audio based content. The product was called the Rupert Neve Portico 5042 Tape Emulator, catchy name, which is a tape unit that contains a mini version of the tape heads you'd find on the big reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders that were used in recording studios. So why would you want that? Well, often with older recordings, people talk so fondly about the kind of the warmth, the analog uh, feel of it. Think, uh, you know, Dark Side of the Moon, that kind of thing, some of my favorites. And people often attribute that warmth to the microphones and preamps that were used in that time. But guess what? Those mics and preamps are often still used today. The bigger difference in my opinion is that those old recordings went to tape. And since the kind of probably the 90s, I'd say, there's been less and less recording to tape in favor of digital, understandably because of price and convenience. But I would say a lot of that kind of warmth can be attributed to th that process, you know, really slamming through a tape head and onto tape. And um, it just gives you natural sounding compression and saturation that it's just really hard to achieve in the digital world. At the time, the distributor got in touch and said, we've got this new Rupert Neve unit. Do you want to try it? And I thought, Neve? New? Rupert? Unit? Yes. And I loved it. For non-audio nerds, Rupert Neve was, rest in peace, the designer of some of the highest regarded recording gear. So anything bearing his name, you pay attention. Once I had it and had heard what it could do, I really wanted to go back to the distributor and say, look, 
Send Me The Bill, it's staying with me. Um, but at the time, I really couldn't. I was trying to save every penny to buy a house, and so it had to go. Since then, I record less in the way of live instruments, so I probably can't justify reacquiring it, but you never know. Next, we have a microphone that I used to own and now really miss, and that's the Audio Technica AT 4033A condenser mic. It's not outrageously expensive, but there was just something about the way it captures sound that really spoke to me. When I was writing the script for this video, I really had a hard job kind of putting into words how to describe how this thing sounds. So I'll give it a go. It's not sort of overly hyped in the top or bottom end. It's also not, it's balanced, not neutral, but not boring. I don't know, it's just really difficult. If you own this microphone, and have some thoughts, please uh, let me know, uh, you know, help me. You can get the 4033A for around 200 pounds, euros, dollars, at the time of filming used, because it's been out for a little while. It's honestly one of the best value microphones I've ever owned, and you know what? Because it's fairly low price now, I even, I, it might be a candidate to reacquire. Then we have an instrument, and it's a guitar called the Line 6 James Tyler Variax JTV59. Man, there's some, there's some really catchy product names in this video, aren't there? This was a collaboration between fairly low-end guitar FX company Line 6 and extremely high-end guitar builder James Tyler. It looked a little bit Les Paulish and had some weird inbuilt features where you could override the normal pickups and make the guitar sound like something completely different, like a sitar. You could also mess with the tuning with just the click of a button pretty gimmicky stuff to be honest, but the guitar without all the extras really was just a bit of a rock machine. It was a joy. Ah, I sold it of course, I think at the time I needed cash, and at the time I'd contracted that really well-known uh, temporary form of insanity where you convince yourself that you've got enough guitars. Thank God I got over that crippling ailment, but not quite in time to save the JTV-59. It's no longer in production, so if I wish to get it again, it's uh, the used market only, but you know, you never know. If you own one of these and don't want it anymore and live in the UK, you know. Next we have another lens, and it's the Tamron 28-75 f2.8 G2. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, and that's that when it comes to those 24-70 to style standard lenses, I've never found one where I thought, yep, that's the one. I loved the 28-75 when I reviewed it, and what do I know, maybe that was the one, or maybe not, I don't know, but what I do know is I do miss it. I miss the look that I got from it, the smooth autofocus, and the really reasonable price tag. I've got more 24-70s I want to try, but I may circle back and snap up this Tamron. Thoughts? in the comments, please. The final grass candidate is another microphone, and that's the SE Electronics RN17 small diaphragm condenser mic. It's another Rupert Neve design product that's not inexpensive and is certainly worthy of bearing the Neve name. It looks unusual for a pencil condenser with a huge bulge at the rear that houses a ginormous transformer. Sonically, it was pretty exquisite. It's sort of fatter than you'd expect because of the big transformer detailed but not top endy you know it was um, smooth classy those are the words that come to mind so I miss this them I should say I actually had a matched pair and you know what I, they're still in production at the time of filming but you know what they're not as I said they're not inexpensive and to be honest I don't know if it would be worth you know trying to find another version of this when I own the warm audio WA 84 pencil condenser mic, which I really, I really like that one too. So I don't know. So that's my list. I definitely have forgotten quite a few, but should I do a controversial gear I really don't miss video? Please let me know if you'd like to see that. And also do let me know anything over the years that's given you a bad case of grass. That's never gonna catch on, is it? Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video um, interesting and entertaining. It's not really a helpful video, but you know, it's entertainment. 
do um, do hit me up in the comments and uh, let me know what you think. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better videos.